welcome to the third episode of Clay Shooter TV. On the program this month, we have another top tip for competition shooters from Georgina Roberts. And later in the show, we've got a couple of new products to review. Firstly, Drenin will be looking at the Yieldits Compact and later the Evolution Magnix glasses. But first up, here's Simon O'Leary, who'll be running through how to check and perfect your gun fit at home. Win. Score. Deliver. Browning, the brand of champions. Welcome back to another episode of Clay Shooter TV. And indeed, again, we are sponsored by the superb Ely. Now, unfortunately, today we're not going to do a huge amount of shooting because we're going to look at how we best get set up for any type of target with dry practice, sort of home practice, and bringing that practice into a shooting school onto a target. Combined with that, we're also going to look at gum fit. Uh, a very dark art, a huge subject, but just a few basics, just so you can ensure that the gun is lined up to your eye, so the home practice and indeed the real life shooting all comes together. Practicing the mount at home. Um, now some of you may already be aware of you know this sort of setup, but just for those who are not, I'll just briefly run back through. Um, it relies on having a mirror, okay, at home, mirror on the wall, uh, and you're gonna put a piece of sticky tape or a marker on the mirror at your eye height. So level with your eyes, minus half an inch, okay? This is a rough guide. Now assume that uh, to the right of your screen, I've got a mirror on the wall, so I'm now facing it, and I've got my dot just half an inch below my eye level. I'm a right-handed shooter. I'm gonna stare at that dot, that dot's 12 o'clock. So my feet are gonna be one and two o'clock in relation. Remember, if you're a left-handed shot, your feet would be 10 and 11 looking at the 12 o'clock dot. Okay, so I'm here, nice and relaxed. I've got my nose over my toes on my left foot, right-handed shooter. And I'm gonna show gun down, okay? So traditional gun down, sort of stock, beginning of the rib cage, side of the chest, okay? It's relevant to all mounting, but let's just for, just for today start from there. So I'm looking at my dot. I've got the muzzle, the end of my barrels, not the bead, the end of the barrels, just a little way below the dot, a centimetre, two centimetres, no more than that. But I'm staring at the dot on the mirror. And then from there, I'm very slowly pushing the muzzle onto the dot as I bring the stock up into the cheek, okay? So again, I'm looking at the dot, mounting the muzzle on the dot as the stock comes into the cheek, breathe, and then let it back down nice and slowly. Now, nice methodical practice, nice and slow. It's almost a bit of a workout, actually. You'll feel uh, the calf muscles, the core muscles, bicep, tricep, all pulling. If you feel that, at least you know you're doing it correctly. When you've mounted the gun up onto the dot, the important thing is that your eye is sat on top of the flat rib, on top of the barrel. So what I mean by this, let's just say you've got blue eyes, that the blue disc, the blue circle, is sat on top of this flat rib, okay? So you can see the dot, you can see what you're looking at. If indeed your eye is left or right or high, once you've mounted the gun, Oh, my reflection's showing that my eye's quite high. Let's try and nuzzle the cheek down onto the gun to get it level. Now, based on the fact you can do that and almost self-police, brilliant. But if you can't, it might then bring us into maybe having a look at the gun and the shape of the gun. So let's take a closer look at the details that could hinder the mount. So elements of the gun that can affect the mount. Um, we're moving into the subject of gun fitting here, almost, and it's a, it's a hugely detailed subject and actually is a very dark art. 
So I'm just gonna really literally skim the surface of this so you can almost sort of, you know, try a few adjustments yourself, but failing that, go and see a professional, go and have a lesson, go and have a gum fit, or go and talk to someone who understands, you know, the sort of dims of a, of a stock and how they best fit the many different shapes and sizes that we all are. So, uh, I, I said earlier, using blue eyes as, a, as an example, you know, the eyes sat on top of the rib. Let's consider that you've mounted the gun, gun safe by the way, and you're seeing this lever, the back of the lever. Now that would suggest that the comb's too low, so our eye needs lifting. So we could, sorry, I'm probably gonna reach out a frame here. We could fit what's called a comb razor. And these can be purchased from gun shops. And they literally sit on top of the comb here, a couple of three pieces of electrical tape. And that literally raises this part of the stock. This is called the comb. And that is called a comb razor. Job done, tape it on. Comes in four or five different thicknesses. So you can play about with those back into your mount position, weight forward, so on and so forth, and find one that best fits so it gets your eye, when the gun's closed, onto the top of the rib. Okay, so that's a nice, quick fit. Now, the other thing that could be, could be the other, the other way round, that the eye is too high. Now, if you look on most shotguns, the comb will always slightly taper downwards with the barrels flat. So if the barrels were level, the comb always tapers downwards. So if we're mounting the gun and the eye's too high, we possibly could then say, well, let's extend the stock. So it brings the eye further down, lower down, and therefore, hopefully, makes everything align. But we have to go a bit careful then that we don't make the stock too long, that we've got it, you know, our, our, our left hand out too, too far, that the gun becomes out of balance, cumbersome uh, and makes the thing really difficult to shoot. Now, if your eye is level, um, you've been practicing at home relentlessly, um, shoving your cheek in and trying to get it sort of to fit, but it's not working. And let's remember, you know, we don't want to cause any discomfort. Then it may be that the shape of the stock or the cast of the stock is incorrect. And it's at that point that one would then need to go and see, you know, an instructor, a gun fitter, uh, uh, and sort of take a view, you know, on what to do. Now, guns can be adjusted. Wood can be reduced, obviously. This part of the neck can be heated up and the stock can be manipulated to a degree. Or it might just be that the gun is the wrong gun for you. We don't always get it right. So bear in mind, and be prepared maybe, to chop in your gun and buy an alternative. Um, at that stage, I would say, really do ensure that you see a reputable coach gun fitter. Um, we have heard some hideous stories of people being misled and given information that, you know, might be valid in a year's time and so on and so forth. Literally 180 degree and run, it's, it's not right. A proper person will look at you, look at the gun, balance it up, and then we'll either direct you in how it can be changed or possibly that it might be the need for a replacement. Anyway, I'm gonna pan round now and I'm gonna show you that home practice on a real target. So uh, you've listened to me talk about the mount practice at home and the little details related to that. Um, and you've looked at us now coming out into a stand and, you know, actually shooting it for real. Now, unlike Ely being superb, the British summer weather is not and it started to rain. So I'm going to hurry up. Now, some key points here. Stance has got to be perfect. It's all about the mount. It's all about the stock, the comb of the stock coming up under the cheek. We've talked about comb razors and so on and so forth. If indeed you find the stock is too short, I didn't mention this earlier, there are little pads and things that you can get to put on as a temporary fix. 
but if we're looking at any form of permanent solid changes obviously we'd after our gun fit go and see the gunsmith and that all becomes one process now remember when you put this practice out onto a real target the target must have plenty of time and be a target that you can shoot straight at we don't want anything that has any lead so you can see it mount on it and shoot it obviously using our timing that we've talked about in all the other episodes um, I hope that does add some value and please if you are starting or you have got a gun that you feel doesn't fit correctly leave a comment you know and we'll come back to you and we'll see if we can add some value that's what it's all about it's sort of educational and trying to get you shooting as well as we can I hope that's added some value and I look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of Clay Shooter. So today's competition tip is all about the power of shooting at different shooting grounds. As shooters we need to be really adaptable and flexible because there are so many varying factors that we need to comprehend. So every shooting ground is going to have a different background, whether that's on different ranges or different stands, everything's going to look slightly different. At different shooting grounds we're also going to face different coloured clays and different manufacturers of clays, which means that some targets might be more difficult to break than others. So being able to travel and get experience at different grounds really means that we're going to have as much experience in our toolkit as possible, meaning that we're always going to be really confident when we go to the next competition. From breaking targets to breaking stories, you're now watching Clay Shooter TV News. If you're on the market for a new gun and want to try before you buy on some real clay targets, head to the R&B Sporting Open Weekend. Held at South Worcester Shooting Ground on the 10th and 11th of June, the event is free and open to all. So don't miss the opportunity to try a huge variety of demo guns on their compact layout. And there's even a chance to win a new Winchester SX4 Stealth in the charity raffle. If you want to show your support for a charitable cause, head to the Riverside Shoot near Chepstow on the 24th of June, where a charity shoot is being hosted in aid of Marie Curie and in memory of Pauline Botwood. There will be a 120 bird, two gun flush over three stands, plus a practice stand, a raffle, and hot food for sale. The British Shooting Shotgun Series kicked off in April, hosting its first events for Olympic ski and trap at Bisley and East Yorkshire Shooting Ground respectively. There have been a couple of changes to the series this year. An additional round has been added, making it four rounds plus the season ending British Championships, which was previously known as the Grand Final. There's also no longer a ranking system. Each round is now a competition in its own right and the British champions will be decided on the day at the final event. Don't forget to check out when the next events are running and get your entry in by the Monday before. Let's hear now from Aaron Heading and Australian shooter James Willett, who provided one of the star performances at the first trap event of the series. It was immense. Um, such a such a strong final from everybody, but more more James to the end. It was it was just well, world class. You know, we've got a world class athlete joining us at the British shooting um, selection here, and and yeah, just showing us what what the world's like. What was it like? Did it help you up your game having someone like James on the on we the spot to. with you? We had to with James shooting 125 straight. You know, we knew that final was going to be immense. So yeah, it definitely up. I had to lift up a level that I haven't been for a very long time. James's 125 straight in qualification is something that just comes naturally to you. What, what was it? How did you get it? Yeah, I wish I could say that, but um, unfortunately, yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, you try hard every time to try and do it, but it 
just doesn't happen all the time, but I was really pleased to be able to do it here. I, you know, sort of come here in between the two World, World Cups, um, wanting some high competition training and um, coming to the Shotgun Series, I knew it was going to be a tough competition. Obviously with Aaron, Matt, Nath and the, the rest of the crew, you know, I knew that I was going to have to shoot a decent score to make the final. So um, it was, yeah, really good competition, really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, was really pleased to, to shoot, shoot a good score and shoot a good final and yeah, Put it up, put it up there with Aaron, and um, come away. Yeah, 46 was not quite good enough today, but um, but yeah, it was a good, good competition all in all. And um, thanks to everyone who contributed to the event. That's all the news we've got time for today. You can find more information on all the events we've talked about via the links below the video. And don't forget to check out the range of membership benefits that the CPSA has to offer. Now let's head over to Drennan and see what he has to say about the Yieldits Compact and the Evolution Magnix glasses. Good morning, welcome to Oakhedge shooting ground again. Uh, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, Oakhedge is a shooting ground in Staffordshire in the UK for uh, our overseas viewers. Today we were reviewing a 20 bore by Yield It. But it's not just any 20 bore that's rolled out of all of the factories in the shooting world. Yield It's have made this one, and it's called a compact. And there's quite a few re reasons why they've called it the compact. And I'm gonna to come to that a little bit later on after you've seen me sh when I've shot it. But I'm just gonna go through a few features with it right now. This one, it's the alloy action, and they do also make the same model with a steel action if you want that. It comes in 26, 28, and 30 inch barrels, and multi-choke, so it gets multi-choke, five chokes with it. Double ventilated rib, so if you're doing a lot of shooting, your barrels can obviously vent off quite quickly. Hatched rib, so like today, we're having some strange weather here in England. One minute is bright sunshine and then all of a sudden it's raining. So if it's bright, I know that when the sun hits the rib, the hatch will just take the glare off. This particular one is a fixed stock, but they also do a adjustable version. Now, this particular one is just over 700 pounds in money. And for probably the price of a slab of 20 bore cartridges, you can get an adjustable one. This is the Monte Carlo one, and it's got absolutely lovely figured wood on this. Palm swell, which is a nice palm swell. It's not like some of the guns that we review where the palm swell is really heavy, thick in the hand. Laser cut checker in. A very tight radius pistol grip. And with that palm swell, your finger, your trigger finger, really does sit really well on this particular trigger. This has got the Snable 4 end on it, and again, it's got laser cut checker in, but the panels, and I've said this before, are actually in the right place, and they look neat and they're tidy, and they are very functional. It's a manual trigger, so you can't adjust it, but, and you're gonna see this in the video, because it's a manual trigger, it will fire, or short, any cartridges. And we've got cartridges from Express, we roll the way down to their Magnasonic range, which is, yeah, on the level of an air rifle for recoil, uh, all the way up to one of their game rounds. So I'm expecting a bit of more recoil off these, but like I said, manual trigger, it should shoot anything. So we're not relying on recoil to cock it for the next uh, shot. Single selective trigger, so you can fire top barrel first, bottom barrel, whichever your preference. Three inch chamber, believe it or not, in a 20 bore, steel proof for high performance steel. So you can put some big daddies in this if you want to. Back to the alloy action again. This is really light. This is around about six pounds in weight, which will suit quite a few people and quite a few applications of shooting as well. Is it a clay gun? Is it a field gun? It's what I call a hybrid. It's multi choke. It's set up kind of for clay shooting but also for kind of game shooting, it's actually quite a clever little gun this. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about how clever this is after you've seen me shooting this. So I'll see you in the next clip on one of the shooting stands. Okay, we're gonna start off 
with Express's Magnasonic with his 20 bore. Going to show you the differences in cartridges, how it, the action actually operates with it being a manual trigger. So this is a 21 gram Magnasonic, which is yeah, super, 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 super soft. So you'll get to see what a manual trigger can do. Bolt. That's the 21 gram Magnasonic, which is, well, it's very off-putting for a shooter because they're so, so soft. Okay, 24 gram clay round now. So I'm expecting a bit more in there. Pull. Now I'm gonna put some game cartridges through it, 20 ball game from Express. Pull. And there you go. So you've just seen a manual uh, trigger and it can fire a whole range of ammunition. Uh, specifically that really light cartridge, which I can pretty much guarantee if that was an inertia driven 20 bore, it wouldn't cycle the second shot. And we'll see you now in the next piece. Oh. So I've just shot of various uh, targets here at Oak Edge, we've shot an incoming as you always see me do that with any gun that I'm trying, doesn't matter what make it is, cost, always start with an incomer, nice and easy, lemon and squeezy. Shot some other targets, some going away, a bolting rabbit, a right to left crosser, how does this gun behave? Well, it, it doesn't suit somebody like me because it really is designed for people that are shorter in stature and build, petite people things like that but it shoots really nice for this kind of gun so yeah we've tried a few styles uh, if you're a shooter like me you will find that the lightness of this gun and this kind of barrel length is you're gonna struggle um, but my daughter shot it at 10 years of age and she's had no problem with this as well so so be be wary of the weight of this being so light and the barrel length but it's done exactly what I wanted to do so we shot a few styles with it, we shot a few birds, we've missed a few, we've hit quite a lot, we've tried different cartridges and you've seen it, uh, the trigger works perfectly for it, so there you go and we'll see you in the next segment. So, what's my review and opinion of the Yield It's Compact 20 ball alloy action? Mm, have uh, some pluses and some minuses, quite a lot of pluses though. I'm going to start with the minuses. And there's only really one, and it really is horrid. This is an auto safety. And to push it on and off for each shot, as a clay shooter, nearly all clay shooters are all going to agree with me there, it's a real pain. When you set up for clays as well, pushing it forward, I kind of get the idea because of the sort of people that are trying to market this gun to, which I'm going to come on to again in a minute. I hate auto safeties. This just I've struggled with this because I don't like to have auto safeties. That's only my real gripe about this gun because of the price that it is. I mean, yeah, if it was £1,700, then you could pick other faults. Now the pluses. 
What I really like, what Yield It's have done, is the name, Compact. Because most of the gun manufacturers these days are trying to say, this gun is for a junior, this gun is for a lady, this gun is blah, blah, blah. And they're trying to really make it either age orientated or gender specific. So it's a very clever gun in that it can suit every gender and every age of a certain build. If you're six foot 19, as I always say, forget it. I'm five foot six. This is too small for me. My daughter shot this gun uh, the other day. She's 10 years old and she shot it with a Magnus Onyx. It was her first time ever with a shotgun. Um, She's uh, did really well, shot 9 out of 10 with this gun using the Magnus on it. Our cameraman here, he brought his girlfriend along. She's never shot before, ever. She's quite a petite girl, light frame, quite short, small, whichever you want to call it. She shot this using Magnus Onyx as well. She's in her early 20s. She had no problem with it as well. I have had one of my friends shoot this as well, who's ooh, 68 now, I think. So he's not got the build structure that he used to have and he found it lovely because it was nice and light and that's great that marketing that Yildits have done we're going to open this to the world to everybody and it's very clever and for the price well I can tell you now this won't be going back I'm going to keep this one this is going to go to my daughter um, but also I can use this for people that are coming into the sport never shot before so yeah it will suit anybody but not everybody um, Clever gun, just over 700 pound. It's a lot of gun. It's gonna last forever. So, well done to Yield It's for actually getting a gun that fits in a market really well. And on that note, I'll see you again. The team from Evolution sent me their new glasses called Magnex a few months back actually to try out. As you know, I've been shooting with Evolution glasses for a quite a long time and I find their product very good. Super strong, really comfortable and lightweight to wear. But these ones that I'm using, that's actually on my head right now, are really special for somebody like me or anybody who wants to change lenses a lot. And here in England, um, our weather is, as it is at the moment, it's overcast. Five minutes ago, it was bright sunshine. And the weather changes and varies with different light. And all of you who are shooters will know this. How many times have you put lenses in and you go, oh, I need to change my lens and your broken arm or the tang come off the lens and it's horrible. And in live stream kind of way, now I'm gonna show you how quick it is to change the lens. And it's literally this quick and you choose your colour, so I will go for yellow and it just... How good is that? No drama, no force, no like, oh, like you do on some brands where you feel like you're it's like trying to break a piece of rock and if the weather changes again you just get, oh it's gone nice and bright now so, oh, I'll have a dark lens Look at that, how quick is that? Unbelievable, fantastic for anybody really, especially somebody like me, out in the fields all day, every day. Now somewhere on the internet, there is actually a video of me standing on these frames from another brand of Evolution, but these are the same kind of nylon that are virtually Drennan proof at over 200 pound in weight. The nose piece, as you can see here, it's super easy to adjust depending on the width of your nose, how you want the frame to sit on your face. Do you want it lower down on your nose, higher on your nose? So we've got no arm changes on this to peel off and I've lost it or broke it, which I've done loads of time. It's all together in one, super light. These are coated, all lenses are coated, scratch resistant, water resistant, UV 400 and the list goes on. There's a lot of information online about this with a super tech spec on the Evolution glasses site. They come in three lens sets, four lens sets, five lens sets, and I think, currently, starting now, they started at around about just under the 130 pound mark, and they go up. But when I say go up, it only goes up 
like that. Not like some brands that are out there where they go up and you want one more lens and it's like, hello, Mr. Bank Manager, I need to have a loan to buy this lens because it's a trillion quid. Like I said, I've been using these for months now. These sit on your ears really comfortably. A lot of arms that you get with all sorts of brands of lenses, they, they're cumbersome and they dig into the side of your head. The tips on these are so soft, but not that soft where you feel as though that they're not actually on your head. And again, the weather's changed here again already. I don't know whether it's picked it up on the camera. Red lens, especially if you're gonna be shooting like uh, orange clays or if you're one of our heli shooters as well. Yeah, you can pick whatever you colour want. There's all sorts of tech specs that tells you you use this lens for this and this lens for that. And I can tell you as a shooter, you pick a lens that suits you. So if you want to shoot purple, it orange clays, then fine. If it suits you, it's fine. Or if you want a really dark lens like I do, I usually shoot in a dark lens because I suffer with the light. So even now as the light's changing again, just peel it off. Get back in the case. Dark lens for the bright sun. That's it, it's done. I'm ready to go onto a stand. And if I just punch the nose piece in, I'm ready to go. It's as easy as that. Comes in a case, you've probably seen me do this before. Really robust case. And I need a case like that because I am very heavy handed with kit. So, yeah. 10 out of 10 to Evolution again for. A game changer, I think it's so easy to use and as I said, you've all been on shooting grounds and you've seen people changing lenses, haven't had time to change the lens as the weather changed because the name's been called. I would say you can time it yourself when you see it on YouTube. I think it takes me about maybe 15 seconds to change the lens. So here you go. Go onto the Evolution website and get yourself a pair of these and I'll see you another time. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our Facebook page for all the information on what's coming up in the next episode.